This instructional video will illustrate how to assemble the base and draw split section assemblies of a knockdown steam max boiler together. Warning: These instructions are designed for use by a trained professional only. Untrained persons should never attempt to install, diagnose, modify, or repair heating equipment. When installing this equipment, use good judgment. Read the instructions provided with equipment. Take appropriate care when handling heavy equipment or objects that could, if improperly handled, cause cuts or abrasions. This procedure will require the following tools. A ratchet and extension, a half inch and quarter inch socket, an adjustable wrench, a one inch open or box wrench, a mallet, a power screwdriver, degreaser, and spray on dry lubricant. In order to perform possible adjustments during the procedure, these tools may also be required, a large C-clamp and a crowbar. First, remove the split base assemblies from shipping skids and place them in the area where the boiler is to be installed. Refer to the knockdown assembly instructions included with the boiler for important information on boiler installation location. Set aside the rear air dams which are included in the package. These air dams will be installed after the boiler jacket is attached. Set aside the jacket top bracket packed with the left base assembly. This bracket will be attached after the split section assemblies are drawn together. Using the wood slats that are included on the shipping pallet for support, position the two ends of the base assembly next to each other. Remove the tape holding the drip shields in place from the open ends of the base assembly. The remaining tape should be left in place until later in the procedure. Mate the bases together. Position the jacket bottom bracket on the left side of the front of the assembly and secure it with quarter inch nuts and bolts. Secure the back side of the assembly with quarter inch nuts and bolts. Rotate the assembly onto its back and secure the bottom with quarter inch nuts and bolts. Attach the base legs to the assembly using quarter inch self tapping screws. Rotate the base assembly back to its support legs and remove the remaining tape from the drip shields. The next step of the procedure is to secure one section assembly to the base assembly. We will show the left section assembly being secured first, but you can do either one. First, thread two 5 16th hex head bolts into the holes on the left side of the base assembly. The next phase of the procedure involves lifting the left cast iron section assembly. Please note that this process requires the use of an appropriate rigging apparatus, as well as foot and hand protection. Raise the cast iron assembly. Locate the assembly slots and center them over the two bolts in the base. Then lower the assembly onto the base. Please note that the insulation between the base and section assembly is not used. A high temperature silicone RTV sealant will be used to seal the section assembly joint after the sections are installed on the base later in this procedure. Place a 5 16th nylon locking nut and washer on each of the bolts and tighten. Thoroughly clean the nipples and nipple ports on both of the section assemblies with a degreasing solvent.
Evenly coat the nipple and nipple ports on both of the section assemblies with the Loctite 592 thread sealant provided. Place the nipples into the nipple ports. Carefully tap the nipples into the ports using a wood block and a hammer or mallet. Using a caulk gun, apply the provided Silbond RTV 6500 to the flu-way joint. Place the right section assembly onto the base. The section assembly should be positioned as close to the left section assembly as possible. Align the nipple and nipple ports between the two assemblies. Assemble the draw rods by connecting the 11-inch rods together with coupling nuts. Each of the two draw rod assemblies should pass completely through the upper and lower nipple ports of both of the section assemblies. For ease of assembly, lightly lubricate the threads on the draw rods with spray-on dry lubricant. Place the draw plates, washers, and nuts on both ends of each of the draw rods. Place a long-handed adjustable or 1-inch open end or box wrench on both ends of the draw rod. Begin tightening the bolts on the ends of the draw rods, slowly and evenly, alternating between the upper and lower draw rods. Pay attention to the base assemblies and the section assemblies as adjustments may be required to maintain nipple and nipple port alignments. Continue tightening until the section assemblies meet iron to iron. A small gap, typically less than 1 16th of an inch between the sections after assembly, is normal. Note, do not remove or loosen draw rods at this stage. They will be removed at the end of the assembly procedure. Verify the alignment of the holes on the base of the right side section assembly with the holes on the cast iron assembly and perform any adjustments as needed. Thread two 5 16 bolts through the holes on the base and section assembly. Place a nylon locking nut and washer on top of the bolts. Then tighten to secure the section assembly to the base. Place the seven three-quarter inch tie rods through the lug holes at the upper and lower nipple ports. Thread a 3 8 inch nut and washer on each end of the tie rod and tighten the nuts. Do not over tighten these nuts, they should be hand tight only. This will allow for thermal expansion. Loosen and remove the draw rods.
To complete the assembly procedure, apply the provided Silbond RTV6500 to the entire perimeter of the base section assembly joint. Smooth out the Silbond 6500 to ensure all voids and cracks are filled. This concludes the base and split block assembly procedure for a knockdown steam max boiler.